Hey everyone, my name is David and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to this tutorial where we're going to take a look at uh, how to make a little breach sim similar to what you may have seen in my channels. I had this letter G pop out of the water and I also had uh, more recently uh, something of a logo, I guess, with two letters coming out of the water. Uh, nothing of this should be very new to you in terms of how to set this up so let's do a quick speed run we're gonna create a new clean project and just click the close domain and when you do that you get to pick the dimensions and the water level and I'm gonna leave it to default and then I'm gonna hide the domain container and the domain water and I'm just gonna make sure that this is a fairly low resolution for now there we have it that's our basic scene I had an object, a little more intricate object. I had uh, modeled some uh, some text out of hexagons using um, Mash inside of Maya. And uh, if that's something you would be interested in no learning more about, then drop a comment below, and I would be happy to uh, to make a video like that. In order to make the breach a little more interesting, I'm just going to position it like this, and then we're going to set a few basic keyframes. So here on frame zero it's gonna start down here and you can either go k for all the transform at once but i'm only doing y transform so i might as well twirl that out and click the little circle and then i'm gonna let it run for i don't know 50 frames that should be enough and click it again change the frame change the position click the circle let's see how that looks if we connect the cross as a collider and make sure that it's set to solid inside. Let's also create a gravity and a drag by hitting tab and searching for the object that you want or use the shelf icons if you feel more comfortable with that. So we're running a preview sim, uh, preview quality sim, so nothing should be very slow. It's not going to show us too much detail either, but it's enough to figure out that we have a setup that might work. That isn't really uh, the tip of the day though. Uh, the tip of the day is uh, the fact that when you make this kind of sim, it's kind of easy that um, the effect that you will see if you try this on your own is that uh, the water surface tends to kind of stretch and wrap around the object kind of like a saran wrap and that's why uh, in the first attempt that I did I used a noise field which you can see here kind of kicking up a bit it wasn't exactly uh, fitted to the object so I probably should have done that because um, now it's just boiling up here in the center of the letter G and uh, second it didn't really look that good and uh, what I came up with uh, for the second run was to use another demon, which actually, by the looks of it, has an entirely different purpose. But it was actually on, um, uh, if you've been following Real Flow tutorials for a while, there was a guy called Niall Horn. He had, uh, he created some pretty sweet content back in the day, and he had this kind of like space uh, base kind of thing that like a couple of buildings with a structure that came out of the water. And on the breakdown for that one, I actually caught a glimpse of uh, his technique for disrupting the surface before it comes through. Now, I won't say that I took it to perfection here, but the interesting part is, um, is that uh, he suggests you to use uh, a fluid sim, which you may have seen in my channel as well. If you took a look at my Instagram the other week, this is the the sequence that I used in order to disrupt the surface. So I rendered this fluid sim from up top. Uh, I didn't do it like this. This was mainly like an Instagram teaser thing. But th this part of it <laughs> is what I used. So it just looks at the RG or B. You can actually separate it out. And it kind of converts that into a force field. So let's take a look at just how to use that effect. And then that way you can kind of get the disruption of the surface similar to, you know, if a diver is coming out of the depth uh, and, you know, it kicks up some air bubbles from his uh, ascent or just any 
any type, you know, that creates underlying turbulences under the surface and things like that, and kind of breaks it up a bit. So you could kind of have that go on before the object uh, penetrates the surface. So as for now, I'm just going to hide the cross, and I'm going to deactivate the collisions. And instead, we're going to set up that daemon, which is called... It's a little confusing, but it's called Ocean Force. The Ocean Force is, as you can see, meant for simulating breaking waves. Uh, and it creates a very recognizable pattern. But what you want to do, if you want to use any image, that means you could have your own kind of like waveform uh, texture or anything. You just want to switch the force type from ocean to image. And once you do that, it uh, enables this section. And here you can click, right click, and load a texture. It's going to want, see on the top, you can browse for a file. So I typically don't really use Targa files anymore, but RealFlow requires it to be either Targa or a BMP or a JPEG PNG TIFF. So that was the one that was closest at hand. So the sequence I rendered looks like this. It's just particles popping in and out, scaling up over the span of their lifetime. And I just did this really quick in Maya, so it looks like this. And then I rendered that from the top. So let's load that. Then you're going to get the opportunity to pick the red, green, or blue channel. If I wanted to, I could have made this monochrome. So we will get all of them affecting, but I just wanted to show that. So you can swap between the green, the red, or the blue. And since I have random particle colors uh, seeded, so they become red, green, or blue, this becomes very interesting for us. So we can create multiple instances of this demon and maybe set different uh, magnitudes or something like that. But here you have some options if you want to kind of uh, clip the frame range. You can also do a bit of um, FPS ratio, so kind of time remap this, essentially. I could set it to to and loop. Let's see what that... This is kind of playing back faster, I think. Yeah, looks like it. And then you can also offset if I wanted to start at frame 50, say, for example. In case... Let's say we do this as one daemon, and I duplicate it. And I, that's actually exactly what I did um, for this one. So I had the smoke sim rendered from the, from the top, and I just uh, duplicated it and offset it a bit and rotated it around and things like that. But that's not the interesting... The, the interesting part here is what's really going on. So if you see I play this back, it really visualizes your texture as a force. So now what you want to do is you want to sim a frame so that you can see where the water level is. I don't want it to be here on the top. I want to submerge it a bit so it actually uh, is going to kick up some water. And it seems to me like maybe it's a little, you know, it's not, um, it's not smoother or anything. They're 100% opaque. So they don't have any shading or anything like that. So it creates pretty clipped peaks here. But I'm not going to care too much about that for now. I'm just going to let this run and we will see what we have. It's not kicking up too much as of now. So let's set this a more extreme value. I'll try 50 for now. That's probably going to be way too much. But that at least got to show us something. And as we were watching this, I'm going to hide the actual helper for the demon. And you can see that I've now created something that would be, you know, you can imagine this would take a fair bit of tweaking and setting up to do. Uh, and like this, I can just create my own textures with, as I did here with Maya, but it could as just as well have been with, uh, you know, like a After Effects comp or a Nuke or whatever you have that you want to do. You could get creative here, you could type your logo, uh, company name, your your own name, uh, message to the one you love, what do I know? Uh, and animate the letters in or something like that and have it kind of kick up like when. So we could now maybe duplicate this and go into load texture, which is still going to keep the one we already have loaded. And I'm going to flip it to green. So now the green particles in my little 
sim are going to be what is going to affect it. And I'm going to just change the offset a bit. And this time I'm going to set the strength to 25. And duplicate it a third time. Set it to blue. Set the offset to 0. And set this one to 40 maybe. You know, just to get some variation. And I use Control A to reset the timeline, and A again to kick in, kick, kick off another sim. And while that is simulating, I can show you the actual sequence that I ended up using. So this is the one I was using. I actually ended up giving it another pass, just for the sake of not having, you know, just the silhouette, essentially, of the smoke, because it doesn't have too much d detail here, too much contrast. All of this pretty much gets interpreted as, you know, a white shape that is growing outwards. And I wanted a bit more detail inside here, a bit more contrasty. So you see, I just... It doesn't look pretty to look at, like as, like a, um, as a hero sim. But I just put some like fractal noise or smoky kind of noise on it just to give it some more de detail and that looked a lot better um, when I was using this. So if we now play this back you see that I've kind of created a boiling effect using this. So this could also be something that could be legit to use. Um, so if I just let this, you know, let's see by the time it gets to frame 30 we have some significant details let's just look at the cross again and that kind of emerges around the same time so let's maybe offset the animation for the cross so I'm gonna go edit curve and I'm going to and I'm also gonna smooth out by clicking this icon here you can get tangents or bezier curve which is one of the things I also regret a bit about that first sim because uh, it comes to a halt rather abruptly and that kicks up the liquid boom like that and I didn't do that in the G teaser which I think looked a lot better if they just came it just comes to rest a little more smooth I didn't like the behavior it created so I'm gonna offset this by let's say 20 frames so you can use this hand icon here and just select all the keys you want to work with and press the hand to pan the selection by in my case 20 frames and then hit OK and that's gonna uh, now start at frame 20 and finish by frame 70 but that means that by frame let's see uh, Sometimes you kind of have to reset because uh, the object, even though it's animated, is c is going to be cached, so it doesn't play back the way you would expect it to. Even though you change the keys, you see now it's going through later. So even though I changed the animation, there was an old cache of the object that was taking precedence. So now I can press sim again. And we'll probably want to reset, because otherwise it doesn't fill the liquid on the first frame. And, of course, I disconnected it before. So it's, uh, I'm using my, my spots now that I created in Maya to kick up the surface before. Let's pretend that this is an old wreckage that is being dislodged from the, uh, from the ocean floor and it's uh, pulling up a lot of pockets of air along with it and all of that is surfacing and it's making the surface really turbulent before the actual object comes through. Uh, if you use your imagination you just might see it. Or you know it could have been you could just as easily just cl click load texture and you could have loaded uh, something like the texture that I had here. And if you're curious how to create this type of effect I mean, regardless of what 3D package you're coming from, if you're in Houdini, you have a lot of tools to use and do something like this. In Max, you probably have access to fume effects. In Cinema, you probably have, uh, what's that called? I remember, I don't remember. Uh, it's something. Turbulence FD. Cinema doesn't have a fluid sim built in, but 
turbulence FD. You could probably do something like this with X particles as well. In Maya, Maya fluids, in Blender, a quick smoke simulation, anything. Just render that from the top as it evolves and you, uh, you can get that. I created this with Maya fluids. If you want me to make a tutorial how to do it with Maya fluids, feel free to comment below. I'm not going to do it out of the box because I'm not sure how many watching are actually in Maya. But I would be happy to do that. It's pretty easy to set up and you can get some great results pretty fast, to be honest. Now, I've done enough talking. Let's just look at our result here. And obviously not the highest of resolution going on. But I think it looks a lot more interesting. Kind of disrupts the surface before and then comes the object. And that all, maybe it should have been slightly bigger or something. And that all allows you to art direct these type of effect a little more. So that's really it, I think. I want to keep this short and sweet and uh, right clicking image and load texture and then picking whatever image sequence you have converted to Targa, BMP, JPEG, PNG or TIFF. It doesn't take EXR, unfortunately. A and then as I was going through, you get a pretty decent preview here and that preview which I didn't show, or probably should have. In that preview, you can easily transform it around. You can scale it and move it and flip it and rotate it uh, to your heart's content until you get something uh, that you're happy with. And that's essentially how I made uh, this, this one, by just duplicating it uh, twice. And um, no, I actually, I duplicated it once to get two copies. <laughs> And uh, I transformed, rotated, and scaled it, and I offset the second one a little bit. And that's how I kind of made, you know, it's still not perfect, but I just wanted to, uh, to patent the technique and try it out. Um, so that's really it. You will also see that there's a bit of uh, uh, foam going on in this one and in the other one as well. I just use a splash uh, and foam secondary emitter kind of like the settings that we went through in the, the E breakdown but I will get to that in the next one this one I wanted to focus on the uh, image force field so in the next one we're gonna look at creating nice foam effects so here we have it a little bigger <coughs> probably more suiting in relation to the amount of turbulence we're kicking up it probably looks a little better with a bigger object like this. I will just go to... I'll just let it run its course and then I'll do a preview and then we can take a look. An obvious mistake I made here is that the cross is traveling outside the bounds of the uh, ocean domain. So the cube is 10 by 10 by 10 and the geo is traveling outside of that. Obviously that's not a dynamic object so it doesn't collide. But the liquid does collide so it's being forced back down. Otherwise it would, would have probably been a nice effect with the liquid being pulled up along with it. Especially if you would have gone to high resolution. But now we know that so don't make that mistake guys. Um, so now we know that, so now you, my friends, can try to steer clear of that uh, error that I just made. I hope you like this, and uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below if you want me to elaborate on any of the steps. And um, I would love to see what you can come up with with this technique. So feel free to hashtag uh, Davesplaining in your Instagram or Twitter posts. I would love to see what you've come up with, and I would ha be happy to share it with my little following that I have and uh, share your work. Stay tuned for the next one. I will see you around and take care.